people, this is Tanya from the Tanya Reiki podcast, where we talk everything about spirituality, how to help you heal and live your best life. And today we have the lovely Snezina Granite with us, who is my really, really good friend, an amazing healer that has helped so many of my friends and teachers. And she's going to talk about spirituality and her gifts. Hi, Sneji. Hi, Tanya. Thank you so much for having me on your amazing podcast. Hi, everyone. I'm so grateful to be here. Oh, we're so happy to have you. It's it's really an honor and a great pleasure to be in your beautiful energy. So I've known you for like a few years. And um, I think the first time we met, you, you, did, you did do a clearing on my house. And then... Uh, I I told my friend about it and she did a clearing and then I did a clearing on myself and then it was just like a bunch of my friends and everybody just went to you and I just I'm fascinated with all everything spirituality and healing and I wanted to ask you so just for the people that are not like don't know how this works uh, usually like I call you and, and you don't even we don't even see each other you just Let's talk about how does this work? How does like when we say healing or clearing, like for somebody that has no idea what does it mean? Um, what do you see? Like how how does it work? How does the process work of a healing session with you? Yeah, thank you so much for your amazing question. And I'm so grateful uh, for being here and uh, and so grateful for all your friends as well. So the way the way I see it, I see it as a dual processor uh like a computer so one screen and see everything happening right now like you know, seeing and talking to each other and then there is another screen that i see it i kind of see through my mind's eye at the same time so it doesn't matter where we are because we're in the quantum field uh when we do our sessions um so it doesn't matter where we are if it's in in the same room or the same country or the same uh planet it kind of um it just doesn't matter it is if we're in the same space so i'm able to see through my mind's eye i'm able to see kind of scan um the person's aura the per um, all the men like mental body emotional body spiritual bodies uh all the chakras and and it depends on the question because when i work with clients they have intentions for the session so depending on on those intentions we can access different information fields uh, because it's we're kind of working in the quantum field and we all have access to it but it it all depends on the client's intentions and questions so we go to a, like a specific point um so then i'm able to see like if there is like where the root cause is, if the root cause is from this lifetime, if it's from a, an event in this lifetime or an experience or an emotion or a pattern, uh, if it comes from a past life, if it comes from like an ancestral uh, lineage, um, like something that happened like in, in our lineage, like probably like a few generations ago and then it get transferred to us. Um, yeah, it. it or it, it could be all at once, like we could have some stuff that happened in this lifetime, but it's not, but then something happened in past lives and then something generational. So it, it, it all connects. Um, also there are patterns that I see, it could be a physical pattern. Let's say someone has an issue in their neck or in their back or in their arm. Um, and I had a client where um, he had an issue in the arm and, and he went to an MRI, he went to so many doctors, so many like hospitals, and they couldn't figure it out for like six months. So when I looked in, in his arm, I saw that it was cut off in a past life. He worked, uh, he was a soldier, so he lost his arm and he's bringing this imprint in this lifetime. So we cleared the karma in the arm and that lifetime and the experience and the emotion um, he had in that lifetime. So then his arm healed in just like five minutes. Um, and, he, and we restored the blueprint because energetically it was like as, as if it was not there in this lifetime. So, uh, and, and he's not so spiritual. So for him was 
um, interesting experience, uh, but a lot of people, they need to see the result first. So the techniques and, and what I see is not so important to them, but when they see the result and they kind of um, start believing more, that there is more than what our physical eyes can see. Oh my God, this is so amazing. I know I've, I've been, I've experienced it myself. That's why I like, but for me, I'm really interested in like how, like what's the process, like how, how do you do it? So, okay, like a question. How do you know that you're in my field, that you're not in somebody else's field? Like, let's say I tell you, like somebody calls you, you've never met that person. I call you about, let's say my brother who lives in Bulgaria, you don't know him. And I tell you, can you please clear this person? Like, how do you know who that person is and that you're not in somebody else's house, like clearing somebody else? <laughs> yeah, typically like I can, feel uh, the fields like what like my field feels like and, and typically I become completely neutral when I'm working with clients like before the session uh, so in that neutral space I can just um, guide my, my focus depending on the question so the question is kind of the key point to where we're going in, in space time dimensions or whatever it is so the question points it's like a, a station in the radio, like we find a specific frequency, or it's like we're aiming to, sh to kind of win a shooting range and we're aiming towards something. So it's the question is, is the specific um, kind of point in, in time and space or in, in, in the quantum field. Um, so typically I ask for the person's first name. So that gives us even one more layer to kind of Okay, make making sure that okay, I'm talking, I'm looking at this space, not at this space, or this person's field, not my field or your field. But it's an inner knowing. Um, it's inner knowing, and and when I go into that space first, I have to have a permission of that person, so we cannot just like go into someone's field. Um, but I could see their face, like I could see their body, I could see the organs and the aura and. So I could, can see their essence and and who that is. So there is kind of no mistake if that's him or not, or if it's you or if it's me. Um, yeah, it's kind of looking at a picture, but a, a video, more like a video of someone because I rotate them like this, like 3D mm -hmm. uh, on each side, up and down, uh, because sometimes uh, there are hidden entities attached. So that's another thing, um, because sometimes there are hidden entities attached to a, a client and when they call, um, there is all kind of disruption in the sound and, and a lot of stuff happening and, and entities are preventing from the client uh, connecting and being cleared. So they hide, normally they're like in the back of the neck, they're attaching and like in the heart center, sometimes in the back of the heart center. and sometimes if they're really smart entities they disguise themselves depending on this individual how much power they've given to those entities um, but I, I kind of rotate that um, client like the image in 3d to see if there is anything hidden or attached or sometimes they go into the organs uh, so we can clear that um, before we start so we can get as accurate information as possible and as accurate reading as possible. Oh my God. That's, I know I, I had one. I remember mine was making me invisible or it's make, it was making itself invisible. Like my entity, like in my, one of my first clearings. So, uh, which makes sense when, if you go deeper into it, like why was it happening like that? So, okay. This is super interesting. So when, when we talk about like the quantum field or where you see, those energies and your auras and I guess in that field right like we're all connected so everybody kind of like you know when people talk about the Akashic I mean it's not exactly like the Akashic records but it is kind of like a similar where once you tap into that I guess you really can see and then everything is connected and everything is very clear and you can see not only this lifetime but previous lifetimes and no time and space um this is like amazing to have access to that. So you're, you're kind of like a psychic surgeon. You just go in and you're just like, 
and it's like almost like a. I mean, I I don't know. I I don't see that way. But like, I'm thinking like it's probably like a virtual like reality game where you have like, okay, let's do this and let's remove this and like, um, but I, I I'm sure everybody is like really curious and like how to develop this. Like, how did it happen to you? Like, how did you discover this gift? Like, was it just like one day you woke up and you had access to this, or was it gradual? Or, or what happened? Yeah, I was not born with with all the abilities that I have right now, uh, but uh, we were we we're all born with them uh, on a kind of subconscious level. We especially like being an old soul coming here in so so many lifetimes, uh, we've mastered so much. But in this incarnation, when I was born, I couldn't see like people's ores or organs or fields. Uh, I didn't feel as much. Um, I mostly used my intuition, like I always knew when something felt right or something felt dangerous, like wrong. So I, I was navigating even when I was a little kid, I was navigating through dangerous situations with like knowing in my heart, okay, this is good, this is going to pass, or no, this is not good, you need to like leave right now. So I, I kind of saved my life uh, until 15 years old in many situations with my intuition. Um, where I knew when I'm safe and I knew when I should like do something and, and leave. Um, and then through prayer, because like I was, I was born like Orthodox Christian and, and I believe that there is something bigger than us. I, I'm, I'm not a religious person, but I believe that there is, I always believe that there is something bigger than us. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, my intuition. And then what happened is I started creating a lot of manifestations in my life and, and I'm like, okay, we can do this and we can do it when we want to do it. It's not something that is just lucky thing happens like once in a while, but, but we can create these amazing manifestations in our life. So those two things were kind of the gifts from the beginning. Um, and, and later, I think my awakening was probably late twenties, early thirties when I met a lot of like, I started with a life coach um, and then I followed a lot of amazing uh, healers and teachers. And then I started working with a couple of energy healers and, and my first energy healer, I just love her so much. And she just cleared something that like, I had these nightmares all my life and the same nightmare every single day, every single night, just from different angle. And I thought that everyone had that because I had it for so long. She's like, oh, this is a karma from a past life. Let's just clear it. It's not a problem. I'm like, really? So she cleared in like three to five minutes. And I'm like, wow. So I never had that nightmare again. And then working with healers and working with so many teachers, I was able to open a lot of my channels. And that was not my goal to see to hear to uh, it just came naturally because the more karma we clear the more past experiences we clear the more patterns and beliefs uh, we heal and we clear uh, the more we align to who we truly are and we all are amazing creators and we are all are these beautiful divine beings and when people say raise your vibration we already have a high vibration. It's just it's covered by by all these patterns and thoughts and emotions that we carry. Um, so I see this energy field is like full of so many things uh, that are un unnecessary to carry in this lifetime and in past lives. So slowly, um, I could start feeling so I could feel like bad entities uh, in a room uh, when I go into a store. Uh, around my family if someone brings something home like I could start feeling that and also I could feel like the beautiful energy from animals and from amazing people so I started differentiating um, like the good like feeling the good vibration and when it felt like really um, controlling and possessive and, and really like nasty all of a sudden or, or I'll get cold and st start freezing until I realized that was an entity that was either attached or was trying to attach. Uh, so feeling was like one of the first things that I started developing. And, and that's where I met another mentor and she was teaching me Reiki. So we went and I learned a couple of levels. 
And then uh, one of my other healers, she was helping me to learn this um, another technique called New Paradigm, where I started trusting myself more and more and more because she told me that that energy was so, um, so amazing, so uh, like extremely like high vibration that it figures it all out. So with Ricky, like I had to put codes and like symbols and intentions. So I'm like, okay. But I think with all these techniques and everything that we learn, it's about connecting to our self, connecting to our heart, connecting to who we truly are, and believing and trusting um, ourselves, and then the quantum field, and and letting surrendering and and letting it all flow. Uh, so when I started doing the new paradigm healings um, in in different classes, I started trusting where my intention would go and what like when i feel a blockage somewhere and then from the blockage like i just feel the blockage and and start start removing it i couldn't see like a past life or anything at that point um it i started seeing more when i started learning the akashic records uh, my akashic record teacher she's i'm so grateful for her she's also uh, my feng shui teacher and uh yeah she's like just start talking she's like Okay, just so because we're like 20 people in a class and she's like, okay, what are you seeing right now? Like you start, you just have to, and the more I started talking about what I was seeing, the more this picture started like becoming a movie and developing. And so it was just the practice of it mm. um, to start seeing. So with the Akashic records, I definitely started seeing more and more, but it was more like a picture and then a short video and then a picture and a short video because I still didn't completely trust myself. Um, and then I met this amazing group in Mount Shasta and we started doing lots of like healings and activations. And I took maybe 15 or 20 of these ladies classes. And I'm so grateful for her because it was kind of the alphabet of spirituality to advanced healing, uh, like from grounding to protection, to channeling, to healing and clearing ourselves, to healing others. And I was doing it for myself. I was never, my intention was never to, to do this as like, um, my day-to-day -day, uh, work or my, um, yeah. So, so it was it's a tremendous yeah, experience with, so the more channels open, the more I work with uh, and, and learn new techniques, the more channels opened up. So everything started becoming more and more natural in a way that I could start seeing. So I went to this retreat in Mount Shasta and it was my second initiation there. So we gather for like five days and, and we, do, we do this like very deep soul healings and, um, and, and learning and expanding our consciousness. And then in the first night, um, our teacher would say, okay, now you are going to receive a gift. Just listen what you're giving. I'm like, I, I'm, how am I going to hear that? But all of a sudden I heard you're going to see, I'm like, okay, I already see, what do you mean I'm going to see? What do you mean by that I'm going to see? But that's what I heard. Uh, and after I came back from the retreat in a few weeks, everything integrated and I'm sitting with my friends and all of a sudden I started seeing my friends past lives. I started seeing like karma stuck like in their heart center. I'm like, oh my God, like this is like a different world. Um, and, and then yeah, I started to develop this more and more by practicing it and, and learning more and more. And then I signed up for the advanced healing class where uh, I work with healers that have been doing it for minimum like 25 to 30, 40 years. So I'm like, oh, why not? I can try it. I can see if I can do it. And, uh, and it was amazing for my uh, growth and trust because they are healers that have done it for so long and I didn't know them personally. So seeing things that there's no way I can know about them, you know, like whether it's in their physical body, whether it's something that happened in a past life or something in this lifetime. Um, it was just fascinating for them to confirm each time, like I see something, um, clear something, like they would confirm and they would feel the energy uh, going through them and they would see and feel the release. So that for me was 
help me build the trust in myself and and practice with those healers for a few months uh, so that really helped build that trust oh my god that's amazing yeah you know it's so interesting when people say like you, i mean you see those like sometimes ads on facebook or something like oh help you open your third eye like do this core like you know whatever or do this five minute exercise and then you open and everybody thinks i mean i don't know like sometimes i think people feel like you're just sitting there and like all of a sudden your third eye opens up like you're opening a bottle of wine or something and it's like oh now i can see um but it but it's like i feel like you know the way you're describing and like it where it makes sense to me is kind of like it's kind of like learning a new skill right like let's say if you're learning to swim like i i recently took swimming lessons so it's not like you go in there and you become like a pro at swimming right away when you go in the ocean you first you go slow then you learn a small technique then you learn and then all of a sudden when you've practiced enough and you've trained enough like all these things like put together and you actually start swimming or you start seeing but it's a lot of like gradual steady work and practice and and most importantly believing and letting it kind of integrate right so yeah, I think each soul has an individual journey because we don't always have to go through like a, this lengthy process of learning and healing and practicing. I think probably this was like my soul's choice that I wanted to kind of open my gifts in a very balanced way. Uh, and it took years and it took uh, many different teachers and practices. Uh, but I, I work with clients that they just woke up one day uh, and they're in their 30s and they just had like their a crown explode, like so much information, all of a sudden they're driving, they're seeing past lives. Um, I'm working with another lady, like she has lots of senses, probably over 25 different senses. Uh, and then another uh, guy I'm also working with, like uh, he can feel so much and um, he's not so much seeing, but feeling and it, it just came to him, like he was working and it hit him. Uh, so a lot of people in the last few years, I think, have been awakening so much. And, and that's the thing, because um, we're not, no one teaches us in school how to develop our gifts, let alone if a gift comes, what should we do with this now? Like, in a lot of people, especially empaths, think, oh, being an empath is a really, really bad because absorb, but we can turn it into a gift. It, it's a gift, it's not a curse, or it's not something bad. Um, we can strengthen our field so we don't have to absorb other people's cut but when we feel other people's energies and it's so much easier to um to work as, as a healer we need to be empaths to to feel um but we don't have to absorb it yeah yeah it's that's that's what it is i i mean i wish there was a guide right especially when you first like for me when i first stumbled upon it like i didn't really have a lot of people around me that are going through the same thing or anyone that can guide me so it is very overwhelming and it's and sometimes i think it is dangerous especially if it is not a gradual process it, it could become dangerous for somebody that's like all of a sudden because you know how do you distinguish what's reality what's not reality like you go how do you go back how do you protect yourself how do you um distance yourself between what you're feeling with so these are all things that um uh, i think you know it's kind of like driving a car like you have to put your seat belt and you need to know the rules and everything and yes it's it's a huge power and and, and it's like you can help and you can use it but you can also destroy yourself like if you don't know what you're doing so i i think there's a lot of need more and more I feel for actually guides or people to guide um especially young kids or like anyone that's that's going through that process and and I feel like for me and I know it's individual for everyone but when this was happening to me when my awakening was happening you almost get pulled into these like you have to do it and it's like even if it's hard and you know you're like oh my god i feel like i'm gonna die if i take this class but you just have to do it and you just go through it and then you get on the other side and it's like oh, i almost died and then like something else comes up and you're like oh my god i'm gonna sign up for this next thing and it's like even more and um and th i think sometimes people take a break like for me like i kind of feel like i took a little break and i was like okay let me just take a step back um or sometimes people go deeper and deeper into it 
um, you know, it's just different. But, and I guess that leads me to the next question is like, how do you navigate? Like, how do you, because I'm assuming it's overwhelming, right? Like, do you, do you just like start talking to somebody and you see everything about them right away? Or do you just, how do you distance yourself from it? And how do you like, you know, you don't want to be like sitting there and seeing and feeling everyone at the same time. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because yeah, when the gifts started coming, they start coming one after another, like the seeing with the feeling and it was overwhelming, especially like going to the store, like I could feel like everything like touching me and, and it was overwhelming. So for the first two weeks, my husband is like, are you going to be like this for the rest of our life? Like, this is insane. Like, uh, but it got balanced. So I think the more we practice it, um, the more we practice our gift, the more it kind of like start getting more balanced and, uh, uh, and, and easier to turn off and turn on. Because from the beginning, it took me half an hour to ground, to center, to bring all the energies, to clear my aura, to, to clear my chakras, to set the settings of the chakras, how open, how closed they would be, create my healing space. And, um, and it just took forever, like over half an hour, and then get into alpha state, because in order to do all these healings and readings and channeling, I have to be in an alpha state. So it just took me half an hour each time before each client. And then after that, half an hour to clear myself. Um, but the more I practiced it, then it, it would just take a minute because our field starts remembering the steps. Mm -hmm. And when you say, okay, grounding, it, it, we're ground, connecting, alpha state. Like I, I don't even have to say it, it's just alpha state and it turns on. Um, and then when I look into a person, I don't have permission to see, to like go into the field. Um, so I have to get a permission they, when they say, oh, can you see this? Or can you help me with that? If it's, if it's not like a session, I'm just talking to a friend in a networking event or a birthday party. I tune in to see if this is like something that I should be getting involved into, if I should like if this is something good for, is, is it for their highest good right now? If I should get involved in this or not? So first I see that and then I see what I'm going to say because sometimes I see a lot of things, but I'm getting, no, you shouldn't say anything right now. Or yeah, you should say something right now. And I always trusted it because when I didn't trust it and I didn't say something, they needed to hear it. And when, um, I said it to someone that was not ready, then it was like it backfired on me. So I started trusting that more and more. Uh, but with with sessions and with clients, it's just automatic when the person we start talking, um, and then they give me a permission to go into their field. Uh, the question leads directly to that space in the quantum field where all the answers start coming. Sometimes like I see the energy field as this big cloud. So sometimes I just need to clear the field so we can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in more uh, to see in more details. Um, but we can get to a point any time. Um, but it's practice. Like my husband and then a friend of mine from back home, they they can they ask me like ten questions a minute. Can you see this? Can you see this? Can you see this? Can you see this? So I started learning to see quick because before it would take me half an hour to to get into it but with their questions one after another and i spent two three months with with practicing with a friend from back home like he would ask questions uh lots of questions like in, in three hours i don't know how many hundreds of questions and those questions led to beautiful um answers and beautiful destinations and uh, just so much more awareness and so much more consciousness and so much just such beautiful places so questions are so important when clients prepare questions up front um, those questions are just so amazing uh, but yeah we can learn to turn it off and turn it on and regulate it so it's not overwhelming but it's still something that we need to master it doesn't just come like that or Oh, it gets balanced because people get the gift, but they don't want to deal with it. So they're yes. like, okay, uh, but yeah. yeah, it's about practice. It's about practice. 
So who who taught you like how to, or was it just something you did and you had to like stumble upon it and practice and figure out what works, what doesn't work? Like to center yourself, to like balance your chakras, like just to navigate your gift. Like yeah, a teacher from me, yeah, a teacher from Mount Shasta, I'm, I'm deeply grateful for her because uh, she had these even systems for how to develop our vision to see with the physical eyes like the aura to see with the physical eyes the beings so i'm like i can see it with my mind's eye but with my physical eye eyes was something that was not developed before i met her um and um yeah she had many online classes and once a year we'll meet um in person like a, a group and then we'll do some initiations but it was constant practice because each course was like five six weeks and it was just the alphabet of spirituality. Like first we learned about our, that there is a physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies. Then we learned how to uh, ground like properly. And I started grounding for a month and my whole life changed because I didn't feel what ungrounded, like me being ungrounded, I didn't feel it consciously what that meant. But when I started grounding, like everything started aligning in my life. And then she taught us how to uh, really um, stabilize the aura to to kind of detect any holes in the aura. So mm -hmm. that was also life changing because there were so many little holes where people were just coming and kind of putting cords all around or certain, I would attract certain type of people that would yeah. like either takers or whatever. So just sealing those holes in the aura um, was also for me. And those are simple things that yeah. we can do yeah so we definitely we should do that we should like uh we should do a couple of exercises at the end so that people can do something like can get something practical out of this right like if you're just developing your gifts and you're like okay what am, what am i learning here like then we can we can do a few of those exercises um that's amazing um yeah no you know it's interesting i feel like light workers you know you you do get these gifts but it's not just Oh, you know, let's go win the lotto. It's a lot of responsibility and it's a lot of hard work. And it's like, nobody tells you that, right? And so you're right. Some people say, I don't want to deal with it. Or I think a lot of people don't have a choice and they have to deal with it, but they don't have, they don't know how to navigate it. So a lot of, it's not easy, right? Like, I, I, I mean, I know a lot of people that get hurt in the process. Um, you know, there's like, I mean, obviously there is amazing stories, but at the end of the day, I think there is a lot of need for talking about it, supporting and 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 guiding people. I think that's what's missing, right? Because there is like where there is not a lot of literature on that, or like how do you develop my gift? Like you know, no nobody really talks about it in in depth. Some people do, um, but it's not like a mainstream thing. Like okay, how do I dye my hair? Like you know, <laughs> how do I ground? And how do I? And it's it's so important because as energetic and vibrational beings like we need that it's it's very important it's as important as getting food but you know we don't have information on it um i just i want to ask a few more things but um what about what about darkness right like what about like a challenging situation where you know you see something that's that's maybe threatening like has it ever happened to you like or or it doesn't in that field that you access you, you don't really see it that way or it doesn't really matter or it cannot hurt you yeah so um yeah we learned how to clear like curses and and like black magic and stuff like that how to sense it first mm -hmm. uh and and that's one thing i want to talk about because a lot of people just go to different places and they're like okay i want to get this like blessing for love or this blessing for money and it's important to know where this energy is coming from whether it's coming from a good place or not good place because uh many times a client would call and like oh i want to sell my car can you clear my car and then um i'm like wow there is like three objects with dark energies in them they're like what do you mean this was blessing for this and blessing for that i'm like no it's dark energy there like they didn't tell me about the object i saw the objects so we deactivated the objects and and cleared them so those are just like little things like that but i see how people intentionally 
uh, do harm to others. And when someone uses energy to create darkness in someone else's life, I mean, this is kind of karma for many, many thousands of lifetimes. So people don't realize that just playing with the dark energies, it's it's not just for fun, but it can harm a lot. And and most of it, it harms our, we harm ourselves because then we have to repay this. And, um, and then it takes a lot from our soul evolution, but then we learn a lot of lessons, but then it takes many lifetimes to clear that. Um, but yeah, there, they have been demons, especially like from the beginning, when I didn't know how to fully protect myself and my friends would like ask me to clear them and help them and balance them. Uh, I had this like entity jump on me uh, because we were like uh, together um, in the same room and I was doing it in person and this entity jumped on me and and her cat jumped between me and the entity. Oh my like, God. Her cat, like, tried to protect me and I'm like, oh my God. And And this was an entity that was hiding in her and behind like where her neck was but i at that point i i was not i didn't know how to rotate the person energetically to see if anything is hidden um and uh so i i freaked out but like i asked my uh higher self my guides help me like because when i like see with my physical eyes there is nothing but with my third eye wow this face was in my face and trying to like get me uh so it was uh, not a good experience but uh, because of this experience, I learned how to detect them and then what to do with them. So I learned how to open a portal uh, and then send them to the light, like real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, because some of my teachers would say, okay, bring the angels, bring this, bring this. But sometimes I just need to act quick. Like I cannot be asking for angels to come yeah. and take, just like open the portal and send them to the light. And it's like a vacuum that sucks it out and, and then it closes um and then um yeah when people like i see uh some darkness even through generations uh like curses hexes and, and all kinds of stuff um it takes me i i go where I, I try to see where the source is so like i see like okay something is is done on your house or something is done on you and then i go to the source okay i see the person doing it and how they're doing it and then i, I go to the source of the energy that they're using and that energy goes into this like kind of artificial planet of darkness and maybe it's a black hole something like that um so then i don't only clear like the curse from the house or from the person or from the generation but i also disassemble it from like when someone did it to where the source is coming from like from the energy they're using so then that source and i see if this source is connected to other sources so that's how I started learning to kind of detect and go to the beginning of that darkness because it's artificial, it's not real. So we can kind of destroy in with light and love uh, this like artificial planets of darkness uh, that are definitely not beneficial to us anymore. No. That's awesome. Then, oh my God, so interesting. Sorry. And many times it's when we see like because we all have like a shadow self mm -hmm. and we try to push it away or like put it under the carpet oh it never happened um but when we put more light on it and especially when we accept the shadow self accept everything that we don't like and everything that encompasses who we are it just merges with the light and it dissipates because many times we try to push it away but we can just accept it and love it and merge with it with the pain and the suffering and anything in our experiences, it's just merging with it. We don't have to give it so much power and, and, and separate ourselves into the good and the bad because it's about, at the end of the day, it's about transcending, like it's about clearing duality. It's not the good mm -hmm. and the bad, but combining them exactly. together and transcending and kind of being above all of that. And it's yeah. all like become one. Um, yeah. But there's nothing to fear. Nothing can harm us, or it's just um, it's just an awareness. But it's it's nothing to be feared. Awesome, that's amazing. Now that's that's what's gonna add. Like I was gonna ask you, how do you protect yourself? But I think you did answer that. And when we do the exercise with your aura, um, you know, we can we we can kind of like 
experience it together and then like do like a mini protection um i do have like one more question so what about you know sometimes people try to like you know change something about their life or manifest something and they're not successful right and and I was going to ask about like di difficult clients, right? Like difficult is like, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a, such a perspective depending how we, we're looking into something. But what do you see as the root cause? I mean, asking the right questions, I think is so important. The second thing is like you, you said, is like merging the two, the shadow self and ourselves so that we can transcend uh, and really go into beyond, beyond the duality, right? That's like would be a second thing. But what do you say? Like, let's say if we have somebody that's listening, it's like, you know what, that's great, but I'm just, you know, I'm going nowhere. Nothing is, is happening. Like, what what can they do? Like, what do you feel? It's like when somebody feels stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would start with grounding because most of the time we spend, most of the time we spend is outside of our body. Like we're floating somewhere. So I see when someone stuck it's it's kind of they're not even in the body they don't even know like where what they're feeling they're not giving attention to to what's going on right now people are either in the past or they're in the future yeah. when we're, we're in the past it's more like uh depression more like uh and it, when people are in the future it's more like anxiety uh and just going 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 100 miles an hour so bringing them back into this present moment even though it's like so simple uh, and just to be here right now, there is no fear, there is no stuckness, there is only love and joy. So just bringing them back here, like pulling them, putting them in the body and, and clearing the body. Of, okay, stay here for five minutes and, and feel that. Um, I mean, that's probably something we'll do in a session, but if I would have to like suggest something that they would do on their own. Um, that's so cool. This is so simple. Let's do it. Let's do the grounding. <laughs> oh, you want to do the grounding? Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay, so it's easier to close our eyes because when we close our eyes, we go inward. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to do that grounding part. And then if let's feel our hearts with love and gratitude. And when I say love, it's like feeling that unconditional love when you're like holding a a little pet or like a little baby just feeling that unconditional love in your heart and fill up your heart with that love and fill up your heart with gratitude and if you cannot feel the gratitude you can think like five things that you're grateful for right now in your life and holding that feeling and then let's send our love and gratitude to mother earth all the way down to the center of the earth And thank Mother Earth for everything she's doing for us on a daily basis. And connect with her heart. And imagine that she's sending back her love and beautiful frequencies to help us heal and be stronger. Feel supported and loved and grounded and valued, appreciated. And imagine those energies coming up. You can imagine coming through your feet or it, you can imagine coming through your first chakra, which is at the base of your spine and going through all the chakras all the way up to the seven, which is on top of your head. And then going th through your entire physical body and your entire energy field clearing and releasing anything that is not in alignment with you anymore. Thank you. 
and then establishing a connection with our higher self which is 12 inches above our head you can imagine yourself but a version of you that knows and sees everything at any time so imagine that version of you that is 12 inches above your head and let's send love and gratitude to your higher self for always being there for her his support and love and wisdom and guidance at all times And the more we establish this connection on daily basis, the stronger this connection becomes so we can receive more wisdom and intuition and healing energies. And imagine your higher self sending you higher frequencies and energies through that connection to your crown chakra, which is on top of your head, through all the chakras, filling up your entire physical body filling up the entire energy field and mixing with the earth energies and clearing anything that is not in alignment with you anymore And then you can try to sense if there is anything in your energy field that needs attention. If there is anything in your aura, like there is any opening in your aura or anything attached in and around your aura, if you can just scan your aura and detect if there is anything there. So then you can send love and light to fill it up. Or you can imagine like painting your aura with your hand, with your right hand going up and down your aura and sensing if there is an opening, if there is anything attached and just sealing your aura like up and down, up and down from your all the way down to your feet and all the way up above your head. And you can do this daily to strengthen your aura so then you can have easier and healthier boundaries with others so you can have more energy and you can feel stronger and more empowered more in your power and we can you can also use this amazing energy to go through each chakra and just clear each one of them like deeper and you can also use your right hand to cut cords with others like from the back of the neck starting from the back of the, the neck the top of the head and then all the way through the front of the face all the way down to And you can call your soul to come back into your body by imagining the soul coming and co coming in from the top of your head and feeling like a perfect glove and aligning the chakras and like feeling where your feet are, where your fingers are, just feeling like a perfect glove completely in the body and your soul listens to you so whatever you instructions you give your soul listens to you and once you're done with this process you would feel more aware you would feel like you're in your body you would feel um, you have more clarity more aliveness 
but you would also feel your physical body more. You would feel your emotions more, your, your thoughts more, because then you're fully in the body. But that's how you can address if there's any issue. And if you feel any discomfort in any area of your body, you can send that light, that frequency from your right hand and just send it until you feel like it's no longer there. And that's how you can do self-healing very easily. Mm. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Oh my God, this is so amazing. No, I'm, I feel like I got a really good healing and clearing in this. Uh, and I just feel like my heart is like, almost like hurting it's like opening up it's so beautiful thank you this is amazing amazing yeah it's very simple to do it in the morning and to fully center and ground ourselves so then we can start the day uh, because um yeah definitely like uh it's it's such a foundation and so simple but we sometimes we're just so in a rush we just get up and go to shower and, and like don't have time to do it but from the beginning, it might take a little longer, but uh, it at the end, it just takes like a minute and, and yeah. it's so worth it to do that. Yeah. And we can add and we can also create intentions for the day because we, we only did like sealing and clearing, but we can also put the intentions for the day as well at the end. Awesome. Thank you so much. You do this like, do you do this every day? A few times a day, just depending on the different sessions and, and what I'm doing and what I'm going through. Uh, but typically, um, I do it in the morning for myself and then before each client and after each client. Uh, and then if I drive the car somewhere, like sometimes I get ungrounded uh, or if I'm in an airplane or if I go from like one state to another state, like when we land, I fully merge with, with that land. So just depending how I feel, like maybe I would get a phone call and sometimes I, I cannot stay balanced. So then I have to do it uh, to, to come back into my body mm -hmm. or if I hurt myself physically, um, I can also get out of the body. So just bringing myself back and, and sending healing to that area. Oh my God, so cool. I think like, okay, so for somebody that's listening is like, I'm trying to do it, but I cannot concentrate, can't sit still, or like, I don't feel anything. Like, what is your advice to them? I mean, to me, I feel like if you have like a guided meditation that helps some people, I feel like maybe, or like, as you do it more often, maybe that will help. I have a few uh, clients in front. It's very hard for them to focus and stay still. So uh, what they're doing is they're counting, like they're just closing their eyes and counting for like 100 and then imagining the number 100, then 99, then 98. And that's how like they're training their mind because their mind is just so busy. They, it's like wants to do something all the time and all the thoughts, but they're training their mind to focus and get into alpha state because that's what we're trying to accomplish. And all the meditations, um, their purpose is to, so we can connect ourselves to our heart, uh, so we can be in that zero point where there's no time and space. Um, I loved Wayne Dyer's, um, very like simple meditation where he would call it the gap where it's between I am like between I and M that gap that yeah. nothing is and uh -huh. just to stay there. Uh, that helped me a lot like many many years ago yeah. but i think counting counting makes like the brain busy and then it's just going going all the way down to zero um, and doing it a few times a day i think that would really help the brain learn how to relax mm -hmm. also following the breath but again just following the breath is um, 
yeah it, it, it creates distractions yeah uh, still, but i think the counting uh, has helped some of my friends a lot awesome yeah for me it's music like I, I have this reiki music that i put on and like when i hear it i immediately go into that state and so there's something about it i don't know it's a, it is a vibration so i think it, it depends like it, different people different like whatever it helps but i i think it's like for me i get bored easily so like i do it and then i'm like okay like i know how to do this and then just staying in the like that's why they call it practice like you have to keep on doing it and i feel like also when people see results when they do feel the difference like they feel different then they're gonna start maybe like doing it more often and they'll be like okay there is something to this um, yeah definitely yeah yeah when we feel better we yeah we because a lot of people they, they they put pain into something meaning like okay uh i would i would be doing something until i have um let's see how i'm going to explain this so let's say we want to quit a job to have another job so this job until we suffer so and then the pain is so much so we use pain for this momentum so then okay i'll quit now so i can feel better versus being inspired and, and saying oh my god this other job would it's like will fulfill all my dreams in, in using that uh, beautiful empowerment and inspiration and being proactive and um instead of using pain and suffering so much in our lives yeah pain and suffering definitely not a good thing so i just want to end with like uh this like you know question i have like how how can we live like our best life and um recently we talked and you taught me of an exercise and it's a very simple exercise but i feel like there is a lot more to it right than you know to actually master it is like imagine ourselves into a future state and then you know if we really go into that alpha state and we imagine ourselves like at that future state it happens immediately because we are already there right um but there's obviously like a trick like not a trick but like a very subtle nuance of how to do it and some people can do it fast like you know if you practice it and for some people it's so hard but can can you talk a little bit about it like can can you tell us like how do you do it and like you've you've shared a couple of examples with me and then maybe we can do like a simple exercise so that you know yeah you know. definitely so we can use our future self um, imagining like the version of us that has already achieved our goals and hearts desires and and kind of create a bridge and meet our future self and merge with our future self where our future self is exchanging that energy and information with us but if we're not so visual and if it's like so hard to do that um, we can use also our self-image meaning uh, how do we envision ourselves right now in this moment? Let's say, let's say that I, I want to be a salesperson and I want to sell like $1 million in product this year, but I'm a shy person. I'm someone that doesn't like people, doesn't like to talk to anyone, just wants to stay in my room. Um, so my self-image is telling me, oh, are you joking with me? Like, how are you going to be a salesperson? And, and, and that sabotage so it's so what we want with what we're really being it's, it's kind of not in alignment so it creates conflict and it creates resistance to manifest our goals or to take any action because if i'm this shy person and then i have to call tomorrow like 100 people it has to be a cold call like how would i do that i wouldn't do that i would have this huge resistance from zero to ten will probably be a 20 um so working on our self-image meaning how do we perceive ourselves right now so if i think okay i'm a shy person i cannot talk to people then that self-image would not help me achieve my goal but if i work on that self-image like going into alpha state like we said like counting the numbers getting into the alpha state and then either feeling or seeing ourselves as if we've already achieved whatever our heart desire or intention is and just being that like seeing through that through the eyes of that self image meaning so i in that case i would imagine myself as 
being very outspoken, like loving to connect with people, like very easygoing, um, being self-assertive, uh, being really um, a, a great salesperson where uh, I'm not even selling. It just like the sales are just happening effortlessly. I'm just connecting to people, to the right people and like a magnet, like whatever I'm, I'm providing as a product is something that people are looking for. And they're just coming to me versus like me chasing them. So I would, my self image would be like, would probably be very empowered person um, that has the self confidence, speaks very easily to others, connects, communicates. So I would practice this self image like a few times a day until I mastered it in a way that I just think about myself as a salesperson and right away this self image comes uh instead of the old self-image and and this is kind of the shortcut we can heal our body instantly with our self-image uh because like i had a recent like cold and i had to speak in two days so i looked at my self-image of the speaker that i projected myself being on that day and that self-image was not good at all so i switched the self-image right away to a very powerful speaker and, and I lost my voice so that I have my voice back. I can project it all the way to the back of the room and just doing it for two days, two times a day, I was able to manifest that in two days to completely heal myself, to completely restore my voice. We can also do instant uh, manifestations like right away uh, with, with the self image because we're so focused on the outer world, like what's happening around us. Uh, and we don't give enough power to how powerful we are and how much we can create. And we're creating every second. We're creating all the time. But because like, oh, I'm seeing all the circumstances around me uh, and, and I don't see how the brain cannot just find out how, how we can achieve anything or, or achieve that goal, it's impossible. But with the self-image, it's just, um, it, it, changes the reality changes the timeline so we go from a very low timeline to a very high timeline with all the possibilities because we have so many possibilities in front of us and it's up to our conscious and subconscious mind how we're going to project that uh, and we can project it and that's the shortcut using that self-image um, and creating the most optimal one and kind of practicing and practicing and practicing for whichever goal or intention or heart desire that we have amazing that's so cool it's it's like it's great because i feel like you write a lot of like and, and that's what everybody says right like you instead of looking at the outside like we're, because we do see right and we're in this physical realities and then we have the brain and we see certain things and we're like okay i have to go here to there and i have to swim like how do i walk from here to there there's trees i have to like bump through so this is what's processing instead of like going within and now that's what like all the teachers and like i the i am and when they are and so forth like with, and we have the power right so that you know really like under like believing i think the most important thing is believing and like overriding the brain and saying like no it's this is really powerful and it, it can manifest in seconds and it, it doesn't we don't have to like understand how and and what and I think the true master like you know the the masters in, in spiritual tradition and so forth I, I think they probably knew how to do that or they practiced it and that's why they had all these like miracles happen um which you know I think if if you do practice like you you can you can make it something in your daily life uh, and it's so ins inspiring to to hear you like you know like having those transformations and 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 hopeful for people hearing it and saying okay I can do it too so so just like let's recap you you go into the alpha state right like you go into the alpha state for like a deep meditation whether it's through counting or you can listen to music or close your eyes and breathe or however works for you and then you see the image and some people maybe like they don't see they don't have the gift of seeing but they can just imagine right that you imagine oh, yeah or feel you or feel where it's like what do I feel myself right now and then uh and then you you change like you see the image that you do 
like your 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 desire like what what your future state what you want to do and then you kind of switch you put that like you imagine that future self and i think uh, i i did take a course recently where they were talking about these images and other people's projections on you and so they were talking about movie stars right like all these movie stars where you have all the people's projections like or you're like beautiful or you're famous and then you start you have that already as, as a self-image. So when you go somewhere, even if people don't know you, because you have that, you project that out, right? So it does make sense Like if people put that on you, but let's say you had like a difficult childhood or trauma or whatever, like you have the self-image of like, I'm not lovable or I'm not beautiful, whatever it may be. So you do have that self-image. So that's what you come, that's who you project. Yeah. And you, it's not, it's not true, but you just need to like, change it with the with the right self-image thing yeah and it, it can it, it can be quick because i mean it can take as many years to clear all the trauma and, and a lot of stuff uh but we can still manifest and we can still create the life that we desire so we don't have to be perfectly healed and per right? there is nothing perfect we're constantly growing and evolving uh, but but it's a very quick process because uh, it's very subconscious and uh, and that's what it's driving it uh, and that's why a lot of goals goal settings don't work because the light the left brain the left brain has uh, mostly all the logical uh, actions so it has the instructions so it's okay I'm going to achieve this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and that's where it stops so we're using willpower to change the self-image and um like with the example with the salesperson so i'm going to make this many calls and i'm going to be this best salesperson and then i have to use willpower to make these calls to wake up excited every morning and do that and that's where it stops for a lot of goal setting like um challenges or courses but then we use the right brain where all the images are and where the feelings are and, and all of that and using that self-image um, and, and with the self-image projecting that self-image and creating that new reality uh, with the instructions uh, and then we start learning the skills of being a, a good salesperson we start being that so when we start being that that future self or that self-image that's when everything starts being attracted to us versus us going and have to have to do like thousands of things uh, with resistance um it it just starts aligning to us and and kind of we're changing that timeline and that reality awesome. yeah so you have to like like when people say you have to become it to yeah. attract it like you can't just chase it or say you want it yeah and and i think that's the that's the subtle that's the mastery right like becoming it like practicing it so you do become it and um and you know in, in your case like you know becoming the, the person that helps people they can see like you develop it and then you see it and then the image and so forth this is amazing oh my god thank you so much um last question anything you want to be asked anything that like people haven't asked you and then you will you kind of want to say like i wish somebody asked me about this <laughs> yeah i think uh there yeah your questions have been uh amazing i really love every single one of them and uh, we can uh use these beautiful gifts uh to explore uh so much about what is out there because from the beginning i I needed all the teachers and I needed all the guides and I needed all of that to teach me the, the simple steps. But then once we kind of master the simple steps and we go into the field, then with questions, we can just go anywhere and learn anything like the information is there. So uh, with um, with a, a lot of practice and, and in the sessions, like I started receiving guidance in, in, in new ways. So I'm working on a client and, and I like, oh, there is a, this better way of doing it or, oh, there is this easier way. Oh, you don't have to spend five hours or three hours or 20 minutes. You can just do it in three minutes this way. So we start receiving this guidance. Just It just becomes this download, like instant download. Um, and it can be an instant download that we can even write a book, like we can get that download in five seconds. And then the information is so much that we can like spend three months writing it. Um, 
another amazing thing that has happened is that's how I saw I was pregnant because uh, I can see people's essences and they're so beautiful, these sparkling little dots uh, of light. So that's how I see essence. And if like a soul is really evolved, then the dots are many and it's like so big and so beautiful. Um, so I was driving and, and kind of clearing my chakras and thinking, okay, how is my energy field? And, 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 and it's not a good practice to do it while you're driving, uh, but I was kind of doing that. And all of a sudden I'm seeing my second chakra and I'm seeing an essence and I'm like, what? So I saw the essence of the soul was there and I'm like, wow. So then I, do, I did the test and then we went to the doctor. So it took like two weeks to confirm that. Uh, but that was magical, like to see that. Uh, and also I used this like energy healing skills to go into this birding pool when I had to give birth. Um, I used the abilities to create this birding pool where, because I didn't use any drugs or anything for the pain or anything. Um, so my pain from zero to 10 was 13, 15. Uh, and uh, I needed to kind of survive because at one point the mental capacity cannot handle it. Um, so I programmed um, with like one of my teachers, uh, we programmed this birding pool where I would imagine that I'm going to this birding pool and the water of it like changes the temperature of my body and gives my body everything that my body needs to regulate itself. So anytime I would have a contraction, I would just go into the birding pool and, and the pain will go down to a seven or an eight every single time. So it has to be like a like really strict discipline to, to be able to, to go there every single time, like every few minutes uh, and to reduce the pain and to reduce the, the heat and, and everything, all the changes, supporting all the changes in the physical body that were just huge changes like in seconds. Uh, and that really helped a lot. So we can use it in, in like daily little like experiences and to create a flow for us. Um, and we can use it in a, like a bigger events in our life. Um, and, uh, and also find our like soul family, uh, because the more we are who we truly are, the more authentic we are, um, the more clear we are, the more we attract our beautiful soul family around us. And, um, and we can use instead of like, oh, is this guy like a karmic partner or is this guy uh, my soul, soulmate? Like we can feel that and see that instead of going through the lessons over and over again until we learn, uh, we can just see right through it. So we can use it for so many different uh, things like our gifts and uh, our heart and our beautiful energy. That's amazing. Yeah, and most importantly, helping other people, which, you know, so grateful that for you and you've helped me and, and so many of my friends and I'm just you know we're very blessed to know you so that you can share your gifts with us and and empower I think empowering each other right knowing that this is possible for for people and and you can tap into it and you know and you can learn and and make your life easier and just happier more in alignment <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for for this amazing interview and for your beautiful heart and support um, you are darling yeah so it's Najina granite is, or you may know her as anna and uh she does uh, her company is called inline and she does online courses and, and sessions and where she can like beautifully clear you see your essence align you and just you know guide you in, in any way um so aloha and thank you so much <laughs> appreciate you thank you